sometimes I do things and then I'm like, hey, I can't remember what I did. So I need to redo them. And I'm making this video for the next time that I forget, but also maybe it's useful for you so we both can benefit. Okay, so what I want to do is to build a linear regression model in Web v Python. Okay, now there is polyfit in, in Python that you could use with NumPy and all that stuff, but I want to use it for Web v Python. Okay, so let's just start off with the basic idea of what it is. I'm going to make a graph of some random stuff, and then we're going to build this function. Okay. So imagine that I have some data points right here and I have one, two, three, four, five. I don't even know what they are. It could be anything, but it's actual real data. And I want to get a linear function that best fits that data. So this is called linear regress regression or least squares fit. There's a bunch of different names, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Of course, if you're doing it on graph paper, you can take a straight edge and just kind of eyeball where that graph, where what line comes closest to as many of those data points as possible. But we want to do it uh, numerically. And yes, most graphing programs will do this for you too. Uh, you know, Google Sheets does it, Excel does it, Vernier Graphical Analysis does it, and they'll do a great job. But again, what if you want it in Python? Let's go ahead and make uh, some data, and then I'll come back over here and I'll explain this to some level of degree. Uh, but this will give us a good practice at making graphs and stuff like that too. So here we're switching over to WebV Python. <clears throat> WebV Python, hello WebV Python. Okay, I'm going to make a graph. I'm going to call it G1 is a graph. Uh, title equals stuff. Could be anything. It could be any kind of stuff. Stuff. Uh, X title is X. I know that's boring. And then Y title is y and then i like to put uh width let's do a width of uh, 400 by 200 height 200 that way it'll fit on the graph now i'm going to make a dot plot i don't want to connect the line so that's a different kind of thing it's called a g dot so let's say f1 is g dots uh and i'll give it a color equals color dot ooh, color dot blue and let's just start making some data. So I need some, some X and Y data. I'm going to say XP. I'm going to call it XP as a list of X points. 0, 1, 2.2. I'm just making up stuff. 3.1. It's hard to make up random numbers. 4.85. And then I need some Y values that go with that. Uh, y, P for plotting. It's a list of data points. And this will give us a practice going through a list and making uh, plots too. I'm going to need these lists to feed it to my function anyway. Uh, 0 0.1, 2 point, or 4.1, uh, 6.9, 10, 11. I don't know. Okay. So what I want to do is to plot that. So to plot that, so there's a couple different ways we could do that. I could plot individual data points. So we're going to use a, uh, a for loop, for i in range length of xp. And I'm just going to print, I'm going to print i, just so you see, if you're not familiar how that works, print i. So that just went through and print the number in each element, like not the value, it print out the item and item number. Right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I want to print out the actual value, I can say XP uh, bracket I. Oops. And now print out the ith value, but I is going from 0 to 5, so it should work. So there's all my data points. Okay, great. Now to plot it, I can just say F1.plot. My X value is going to be XPI. My Y value is going to be YPI. And then that's it. Boom. You like that? Nice graph. Okay. Now, let's go back to the board and talk about the function that we want to build. So, I'm not going to derive the whole thing, but what we want to do is to get an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, in the form a plus bx. That's just the way it's already stated, so I'm just doing it the way it is. But b would be m and a would be uh, b. I know. So we need to find the coefficient a and find the coefficient b. What we're really doing is adjusting this and finding the 
the least squared. We're taking the, the difference between this data point, the line, and these data points, and we're finding what values for A and B minimize that. So there's a lot of work to do that we're not going to do. We just want to calculate it. So to, one way to do it, there's more than one way, one way to do that is to calculate the B coefficient using this formula right here. Once we have B, we can easily find A. So let's just see what this looks like. N is the number of data points that we have. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. X, I, Y, I. So if you go back over here, this is X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3, and so forth. So I need those values and multiply them together and then sum them. Okay. So I need to take all the X values, multiply it by its Y value, and then add those up. So this will be X times Y plus X times Y plus X times Y. This adds up all the x values, adds up all the y values, and then multiplies them together. And then I take the difference of those, and I divide by the x values squared added up, and then the x values squared. The x values added up squared. So I'm doing, I need a couple sums here, right? I need the sum of x, y, I need the sum of x, I need the sum of y, and I need the sum of x squared. And then y and x already do this. Okay, so I actually have one, two, three, four different sums I need to do. Let's just do one of those sums. Let's just do xy. Let's just do that, and then we'll build a function. Okay, going over here, how do I find the sum of xy? Well, the first thing I need to do is to um, have something to add to. So I'm going to call this sum xy equals zero. So that means that I'm, I have a number, and I'm going to take x and y, multiply it by each other, and add it to that. But I need something to add it to. So we're going to go back to our loop for i in range. I can reuse i, length of xp. And let's do this. n equals length of xp. I'm going to need that. I didn't put my colon right here. Uh, so what I want to do is just, I can do this all in one step. Sum xy equals sum xy plus xi times yi. And you do have to say it like that or it's not going to work. That's it, right? Now let's just print that. I'm going to print uh, sum xy equals sum xy or sum c. And I have an arrow because I didn't do x and y. I did xp and yp, dummy. Okay. And there, oh, it's not a number. Uh, sum xy equals sum xy plus xp i times yp i. Let's just print. That's weird. Print xp i times yp i. You know, you could say, hey, you could just redo this video so that there's no errors, but what fun would that be? So doing that right, I think, do I have a different number of data points? Let's see. Print length. Let's see this count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Aha, that's why. Okay, so I need. I have. I have uh, an uneven data set. So what it ha happened is it got to xi, and there was no yi. So when you multiply this together, it's like, I don't know what to do. OK, so let's just make this one 11.5, uh, and then run it. OK, so now it worked, right? And I have an extra data point up there, too. OK, that's weird. OK, that's fine. So I don't need to print that. But now I have some xy. I have that term right there. Now I just need to find the other ones, and I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop. But I need to come up with some other numbers, so let's call sum x, sum y, and sum x squared. Those are just my var variable names. Zero, zero, this should be a space right there, equals zero. Okay, so down here, let's just calculate all those things. Uh, sum x is going to be equal to sum x plus xpi. Right? I'm just adding up the values of x's. That's all. Sum y is sum y plus ypi. And then finally, sum x squared is sum x squared plus 
XPI quantity squared. So now I have all those things. I can go ahead and calculate the coefficient b. Let's, let's just do the whole thing all at once. b is going to be, now I'm just looking at this formula. So I have n, which I've already calculated, n times the sum of xy, which is sum xy. And then I have minus the sum of x, sum, sum x times sum y, that was that term. And then I need to take all of that and divide by n times the sum of x squared, sum x squared minus sum x squared. And let's print b equals b. And that is going to be our, the slope of our, our thing. And it, you know, it should, I don't even know, I, I don't even know what it is, but two, okay, yeah, I did something around two when I was trying to manually my head calculate those numbers, so that seems legitimate. Now we can go down here, once we have b, we can calculate a, and I'm again just looking at that equation. It's going to be the sum of y, sum y, minus b times the sum of x, divided by n, and let's print that. And that would be the y-intercept. And I get 1.5. So if you draw this back over here, yeah, 1.5 seems like it, it seems legitimate. Okay, now let's do one more thing. No, I'm going to build this as a function and then use that function to add a best fit line. That's what I'm going to do. So how do we make this into a function? So up here, I'm just going to come, I'm going to take all of this code right here, uh, even the print stuff, and it's going to cut it. And up here, before everything else, I'm going to say def, what am I going to call this? Lin reg. And it's going, I'm going to give it two things. I need to give it what parameters I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a temporary x and a temporary y. I'm going to call them y, t, and x. You can call it x and y, but that's what I'm going to call them. Okay, now I'm going to put a note here. This takes a list of x and y returns a and b y equals a plus bx. So I put that in there because I'm going to forget I'm going to which one's which and it's going to make me confused. Now I'm going to paste that and I'm just going to go over here and indent all that stuff. All that stuff. Tab. So again I'm going to make some x, some y, all that stuff in. This is going to be xt. This is going to be xt. t. t. I should have left this p. I don't know why I didn't. t. 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 That's it. Okay. And then B is the same. That's the same. I don't need to print that. Uh, a is the same. I don't need to print that. And then what I'm going to do is just return A, B. So return A, comma, B. Now down here, I'm going to say, uh, let's just print out the whole thing. Print lin reg. Uh, and what I'm going to pass, I'm going to give it XP and YP. And let's just see if it works. And we already, we already saw what it was, so it should give me the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. So that worked. Okay. So now I have a function. I can just copy and paste that code at the beginning of any WebV Python program that I want to use uh, to calculate the linear regression, and boom, I'm done. Okay. So I can reuse that. And you can reuse it too, because you have this code. I'm going to give you a link to that code. Copy, paste, done. Okay. Now let's add a slope that plots that function. It's pretty easy to do. So up here, I'm going to add another curve, f2 equals g curve. It's going to be a line. Color is color dot red. Okay. So I know a and b. Um, let's actually just do this down here. I'm not going to print this. I'm going to say, uh, let's see. So it returns a, which is, again, the slope. I'm going to say b comma m equals Right. So now I'm going to assign the variable b to a and assign the, the variable m to, to b, and those, that's, my, that's my equation. Okay. So now I have those values of my linear regression. What I want to do is to calculate two, I only need to calculate two data points, and I can make a line. So let's just use, uh, let's use this first x, p, y, p, and the last one too. That'll be fun. That'll be more generic. So with the first one, I'm going to say f2.plot. Uh, now, so what's this x value going to be? X, x value gonna, is going to be the x value of x. So I'm just going to say xp0. That's the first one. Its y value is going to be equal to uh, m 
times, oh, X, that's right, XP zero uh, plus B. Right, so I've calculated the y value using my linear regression. Now I need another data point, f2 dot plot. I'm going to use the last point, which is xp minus 1. So if you use minus 1 as your index, it goes and gets the last value. m times xp minus 1 plus b. And let's just see what happens. Look at that. That's just pretty, right? Linear regression, boom, done plotting a line too. So the code's down below. I told you that. There you go. And really, I know that you may find this useful, but I just want to give you a quick reminder that this was for me because I forget. And the last time I looked for this, I found where I did it, but it took it wasn't as general as I wanted to. So hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully I find that useful. The end. I'll talk to you later.